Unfortunately, the lasers turn the atmosphere to plasma. <laughs> and it's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if everyone pointed a laser at the moon? Well, that depends. Are these styropyro grade lasers? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. This question comes from Peter, who asks, if every person on Earth aimed a laser pointer at the moon at the same time, would it change color? <laughs> would it change color? <laughs> nah, the beams would be too faint by the time they reach there. Especially if we're talking laser pointers on the order of a milliwatt. Answer is, not if we used regular laser pointers. <laughs> yes. The first thing to consider is that not everyone can see the moon at once. We could gather everyone into one spot, but we learned our lesson about that already. Yeah, <laughs> the logistics of getting everyone there in one spot without teleportation magics are horrific. Most of the world's population lives between 0 and 120 degrees east, so our best chance of illuminating the moon comes when it's somewhere over the Arabian Sea. <laughs> we'll wait for a quarter moon viewed at night so we can compare the effects of our lasers on the dark and light sides. The typical red laser pointer is about 5 milliwatts, and a good one would have a tight enough beam to hit the moon, although it'd be spread out over a large fraction of the surface when it got there. Yeah, 5 milliwatts is towards the high end of laser pointers, and yeah, it's going to be scattered by water vapor within the Earth's atmosphere, air itself, dust. Interesting a lot of it before it even gets to space. And this sort of effect is not unique to lasers. This scattering comes up quite a bit in radiation physics, whether electromagnetic radiation such as lasers or particles such as neutrons or beta particles. They just lose energy when they pass through materials. Let's assume everyone has steady enough aim to hit the moon and the light spreads out evenly across the surface. This is what happens. Sound effect. Nothing. It makes sense, though. Sunlight bathes the moon and Earth in a bit over a kilowatt of energy per square meter. Since the moon's cross-sectional area is about 10 trillion square meters, the bright half is bathed in about 6 petawatts of sunlight, yeah. while our planet-wide collection of 5 milliwatt lasers only adds up to about 30 megawatts of illumination, which is 200 million times weaker. There's no the light's just going to spread out. The power density isn't there compared to the sun, and you're just so far away. Lasers can have very high power density, but you're generally, but you're much closer to your target. Not to mention, the moon is pretty good at reflecting light. At least they're showing in this drawing red, red, which is electromagnetic radiation of 650 nanometers. The moon's pretty good at reflecting that kind of light. We'd notice the effect of the lasers. What if we tried more power? Um, okay. A one watt laser is an extremely dangerous thing. It's not just- Yeah, now we're getting into- <laughs> I hope everyone's wearing eye protection. Well enough to blind you, it's capable of burning skin and setting things on fire. These lasers aren't exactly illegal, but there are legal restrictions on selling them in the US, which has led to a proliferation of suspicious $200 online shopping listings for one watt blue flashlight, very narrow beam, wink. <laughs> Though he said earlier in this video, this hasn't taken place in the US, so it's fine. I've seen one of these off-brand suspicious lasers in person, and they are terrifying. <laughs> you should definitely never pick one up unless you're wearing safety glasses that cost more than the laser. Let's take it up to 5 or 10 watt styropyro grade lasers and see what happens. <laughs> Suppose we spend a trillion dollars to buy one watt lasers for everyone. Here's the effect. Dang. All those laser pointers light up the surface of the moon with about half a lux of illumination. That's about half as bright as moonlight is to us here on Earth. Even with one watt lasers, that still wouldn't be that much. So, eight billion people, eight gigawatts. Quite a bit of lasers, so a few nuclear power plants worth, because a nuclear power plant puts a little over a gigawatt on the grid, but this is nothing compared to the sun. Less than a fraction of a percent in terms of just power. Not to mention it's all going into one spot of the moon. Now if you had a more powerful and they all focused it more towards an area, it could be a smaller portion of the moon maybe that's a little bit brighter. I, would ex I was kind of thinking it would be like a smaller amount of red would be shown rather than the entire moon. I still don't think a watt's enough, just based on the calculation they just used. 130,000 lux of illumination from the sun still drowns out the lasers. Okay. <laughs> what if we tried more power? There we go. We're gonna have to leave lasers behind for the moment and instead give everyone a night sun, the searchlight mounted on police and coast guard helicopters. With an output oh, on the order okay. of 50,000 lumens, it's capable of turning a patch of ground from night to day. The beam is several degrees wide, so we would want some kind of focusing lenses to get it down to the half degree needed to hit what the What even is this It's now? hard to see, but we're making progress. Our collective beam is providing 20 lux of illumination, outshining the ambient light on the night half of the moon by a factor of two. 
However, I was going to say where all these people are standing is going to give you more illumination. <laughs> Because again, just like any other light behaves just like any other radiation, intensity drops off using the inverse square law. Double your distance from the source, intensity drops by a factor of four. Certainly hasn't noticeably affected the light half. What if we tried more power? <laughs> All right, let's swap out each night sun for an oh, IMAX projector, man. a 30,000 watt pair of water-cooled lamps with a combined output of over a million lumens. Now I do agree that they established with just the amount of ridiculousness that you are using, considering there's 8 billion of these or 6 billion of these, if you're using the 75% figure, then what you're dealing with is on the order of hundreds of gigawatts or hundreds of nuclear power plants worth. You could just picture them making all these nuclear power plants and just having them feed these IMAX projectors or whatever it is that they're using here. Barely visible. At the top of the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas is one of the most powerful spotlights on Earth. Let's really? add a lens so the beam is focused on the moon, put on a colored filter, pyramids. and then give one of them to everyone. <laughs> All right. The pyramids make them more powerful. This is the Brotherhood of Nod using their obelisks of light to attack the moon. <laughs> light is definitely visible, so we've accomplished our goal. Good job, team. What if we tried more power? Okay, we're going to have to go back to lasers. The Boeing YAL-1 was the a 747 laser. size laser pointer. Literally, <laughs> it was a megawatt class infrared laser mounted in a 747 as an experimental technology developed by the US Department of Defense. We can imagine building a visible light laser with similar power and giving- They thought of the, using these to intercept and shoot down nuclear missiles. I mean, <laughs> looks really cool. I mean, it'd be a shame if it's rain. That's, that's the other thing. This is all being done on a on a really clear night just to minimize the, the scattering effects from Earth's atmosphere because that's going to be the most significant. And that's due to the material properties of the atmosphere versus the lack of materials in space. And also it's just closer to the laser at its most intense than I'm just... <laughs> Those planes flying back and forth. To everyone. Finally, you've managed to match the brightness of sun. <laughs> They're all side mounted this time. That's awesome. Laser specter gunships. We're also drawing five petawatts of power, which is double the world's yep. average electricity consumption. Oh yeah. What if we tried more power? Okay, let's put a megawatt laser on every square meter of Asia. Powering this array of 50 trillion lasers uses up Earth's oil reserves in approximately two minutes. Oh yeah. Now at, at this point, we're extracting we're extracting uranium and thorium from seawater, okay? We're also using breeder reactors at this point, and we're building them, I guess, underground, underneath the Great Asian Laser Array. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. For those two minutes, the moon shines as brightly as the mid-morning sun, and by the end of the two minutes, the lunar regolith is heated to a glow. What if we tried more power? All right, we're about to go way outside the realm of plausibility, okay. like farther than we were. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say here we're getting into, though I guess technically none of that was impossible. I mean, with the most optimistic projections of nuclear power, we can even throw fusion in there because why not? Fusion isn't that impractical if you're using this kind of scenario. I think. The most powerful laser on Earth is the confinement beam at the National Ignition Facility, a fusion research laboratory. It's an ultraviolet laser with an output of 500 terawatts, but it fires only- This device uses focused lasers to generate conditions for nuclear fusion. Though, in order to make enough of these to attack the moon with, you're gonna need a bunch of commercial fusion reactors in order to power all of these, so... Pulses lasting a few nanoseconds, so the total energy delivered is equivalent to about a quarter cup of gasoline. Let's imagine we somehow find a way to power it and fire it continuously. Yeah. <laughs> Give one to everyone and point them all at the moon. Unfortunately, the lasers turn the atmosphere to plasma <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, so 500 terawatts times, times 8 billion. No, that's not it. We're covering the surface of the Earth at this point, so times a lot more than 8 billion. Yeah. And they were people that looked into the first atomic bomb detonation potentially doing this. We're dealing with way more power over a much wider area at this point. ...nighting the Earth's surface and killing us all. But let's assume that the lasers somehow pass through the atmosphere without interacting. Under those... That, I mean, we're dealing with magic at this point, sure. Lasers were just that much more energetic, kind of like the way that gamma rays will pass entirely through a person. Yeah, artificial gamma ray burst. 
Why not? Circumstances turns out the Earth still catches fire. The reflected light from the moon because is 4,000 times brighter than the noonday sun. <laughs> but forget the Earth. What happens to the moon? The lasers pump out enough energy to vaporize two meters of lunar bedrock per second. However, once chunks of moon rock are vaporized, they don't disappear, but instead the surface layer of the moon quickly becomes a plasma, which then yeah. blocks the rest of the beam. As our laser pours more and more energy into the plasma, the plasma keeps getting hotter and hotter, enough that the most energetic plasma particles blast into space at terrific speed. This flow of material effectively turns the entire surface of the moon into a rocket engine. And I was going to say it's going to have some propulsive force to that if we're talking ridiculous sci-fi numbers at this point. Surprisingly efficient one. Using lasers to blast off surface material like this is called laser ablation, and it turns out to be a promising method for spacecraft propulsion and moon propulsion. Yep, this same process is used in eye surgery. Granted, their lasers are a little bit less powerful than this, but <laughs> shine laser at something till it vaporizes or material gets ejected as plasma. The moon is massive, but we're dealing with a very powerful rock plasma jet. A very rough estimate suggests that the moon is pushed out of range of our lasers within a few short months. In that time, the jet also scours the face of the Earth clean and destroys the lasers, but we're pretending they're invulnerable. <laughs> the moon keeps most of its mass, but escapes Earth's gravity. I love how many of these incorporate enough magic with required secondary powers, because this thing would have failed long before getting there, but it's just interesting thought experiments, which are certainly a lot of fun. There's a lopsided orbit around the sun. This weird orbit isn't stable, and the moon would eventually either be slingshotted into the sun, ejected through the outer ejected. solar system, or slammed into one of the planets, quite possibly ours. I think we can all agree that, in that case, we deserve it. Oh, this is hilarious. That, at last, is enough power. Yeah, I was going to say at that point, I mean, we've already destroyed the Earth and the Moon. I mean, unless you want to get the Sun itself involved, but I think the whole point of this video was competing against the Sun, so that, I guess, wouldn't be very sportsmanlike. I really enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.